I'm Nicole Greenwald. I'm a licensed mental health counselor in Seattle, Washington, and I'm here to talk to you about demystifying licensure. If you're considering a counseling program, you have probably seen things like LMHC or LPC or other credentials behind people's names. What is licensure? Licensure is the granting and regulating of a license for professionals. And so to practice as a counselor or therapist, you need to become licensed. Um, in our country, licensure is issued by the state. So that means we have 50 different processes for our 50 different states and each one um, has different criteria in place for regulating the practice of mental health counseling and therapy in their state. As you're researching the licensure requirements in your state or the state you might want to live in in the future, bear in mind that this is a process that's really similar to something that a teacher would go through or a lawyer or even a doctor, anyone that's functioning on a professional level and is choosing to move from state to state. You'll notice that some of the requirements are a bit different and that's okay. That's just knowledge that you want to come equipped with as you pursue your education, which kind of leads me to their first step of licensure requirements. To practice as a professional counselor or therapist, you need to have a master's degree in a behavioral science related field. That might be a master of science and counseling, it might be a master of arts and counseling psychology, but you need to show that the degree you received matches their education requirements. The education requirement will spell out content areas that you're expected to have some robust training and knowledge in. That's gonna vary a bit state by state, um, but I would say the bulk of education expectation is similar. Um, something that you'll wanna pay attention to is how many credit hours of each subject area does that state care about? Um, some states are gonna want you to have six credits of ethics. Another state might want you to have four credits. So again, just be equipped with the knowledge of what your state or states that you might wanna practice in are looking for in their counselors. Um, another thing you'll really wanna pay attention to is what is your state's expectation on the accreditation of the school that you received your degree at? Most states are looking for applicants who've gone to a regionally accredited school. The Seattle School is regionally accredited with Northwest Commission on Colleges and Universities and um, meets that requirement. Some states, you'll notice, give priority to students who went to KCREP accredited schools. KCREP is an accrediting body that accredits counseling programs specifically. And often they will partner with the state to create almost like a fast track to licensure, like licensure hours taken off or other things. If you think you're gonna be pursuing licensure in a state that preferences KCREP, check out their website to see what their appeals process is or call the Department of Health and just have a conversation. Most states have an alternate process in place for people who came from regionally accredited schools that is simply just the list of classes and proof of internship hours. So um, it's also very doable to get licensed. To complete a master's in counseling, you will need to complete a clinical internship. Every state kind of has different requirements around that, mostly related to the hours that you've completed. Um, for instance, Colorado wants you to have 600 internship hours during your program of study. Washington State wants you to have 250 hours during your program of study. So that is varies again by state. Typically you have a schedule where you're working from anywhere from six to maybe 18 clients a week. So I can just assure you that it will not be a problem to hit your 250 hours and likely you're going to graduate with more than that. But again, make sure you know how many hours you need to complete for licensure by your state so that you can make sure that you pursue an internship site that's going to allow you to meet those hours. All states have something that's called a postgraduate supervision experience. And essentially what that means is you're in the field, you're practicing as a therapist, but you're doing that under supervision of a more seasoned clinician. So for instance, in Washington State, 
post-graduation, you apply for licensure, you offer information around how you met the expectations, and you let them know that you're working with the supervisor, and they send you something back saying, wonderful, congratulations, you're a licensed mental health counseling associate. In Washington, associate basically means you're working towards full licensure. The supervision piece, simply it just means that you have someone who's a seasoned person in the field who legally is responsible for you and your work and is someone who you legally can lean into. Um, because counseling is such a unique field and so much of it is rooted around containment and creating a safe space that's confidential for the people that are coming and bringing such tender parts of their stories, um, you're going to be holding a lot. And it's, it's a bit odd to not be able to go home from work and share, oh my gosh, here's what I heard today. Here's what happened in my work today with the people closest to you. Um, a supervisor is a safe legal space where you can actually bring the content that you're working with in a clinical way and get support, get feedback, um, and get development. And so in Washington State, you are under that supervision for 3,000 hours. Um, and that sounds like a lot, but it typically takes people anywhere from one to three years to complete those hours. It kind of just depends on the pace at which you're working. Um, the 3,000 hours is broken up into two ways, indirect and direct. So indirect means anything you're doing related to your clinical work. It might be reading a book. It might be attending a training. It might be doing your case notes. That's 1,800 hours of the 3,000. So as you can see, that's the bulk. Um, the direct hours is any work you're doing directly with another person. That could be individual therapy, family therapy, group therapy. It's any time you're doing direct clinical work with a person, and that's 1,200 hours. So together, that that equals 3,000. If you're working in a community mental health agency or in a hospital setting, typically you're assigned a supervisor. If you're in private practice, you can pursue a approved supervisor. And an approved supervisor is someone who is also licensed in the state where you're practicing and has met additional requirements beyond the counseling license to become an approved supervisor. Supervision is something that I'm so grateful that the state requires. I remember when I was finishing school and moving into the field, I was so grateful because I knew I had someone that I could just be completely honest with, someone I could call if I felt stuck or um, needed support. In some ways, it's a form of mentorship and it's also, it's an acknowledgement of the sacred work that we're doing and the reality that as a therapist, we also need to be held as we're doing the work of holding others. I would say that most people that I work with um, as colleagues continue to have supervision well beyond meeting their licensure hours. Um, it kind of builds in a culture of accountability and self-care and seeking out ongoing learning and support. In addition to your clinical hours and your supervision hours, you'll also need to show proof of continuing education units. Um, this is an ongoing part of working as a professional in the field. Um, it's very important and valuable to be able to continue to learn and grow. And that's one of the expectations of your license is that you'll be committed to that. Um, so to apply for licensure, you'll need to show that you've completed 36 hours of continuing education. The final component of applying for licensure is taking a national exam. There are two options available. There is the NBCC, which is the National Board of Certified Counselors exam, and there's the NCE. This is the National Counselor exam. Some states will only accept one or the other. So again, pay attention to what they say there. NCE is a multiple choice exam. It's kind of a comprehensive exam around the field of counseling. The NBCC is a more vignette focused exam. So it will kind of present various scenarios and ask diagnostic question, ask theory questions. Think about the way you learn and your study approach and pick the exam that aligns most with you. Know that you can complete it at any point in your licensure period. So you could do it the day after you graduate when 
theories and terms and theorists are fresh in your mind. If I could give you a hint, I would recommend doing it earlier rather than later. Most people dread exams and it becomes something that's like hanging over their heads. Get it out of the way. You'll feel so much relief. Well, what's the incentive to getting fully licensed? Um, you could apply to be credentialed by insurance um, after you've been licensed for in Washington two years and you've met other requirements, you could apply to become an approved supervisor. In some ways, it's almost like getting a promotion and getting more authorization in your field. Um, and that's something that's super valuable. The way you maintain your license is just to renew it every year, which means you pay a fee and also complete the continuing education requirements. In Washington, your license is due on your birthday every year and your CEUs are due every two years. Um, and that is a great rhythm so that you just remember it. It's such a privilege to be in a therapeutic role with another person, with a family, with a community. And whether you end up resonating with the title of therapist or counselor or psychotherapist or analyst, whichever path you go down in your practice, um, maybe hold that end goal with you as you move through your education and as you move through your licensure period. These hoops and the legalese and the acronyms, there were many takes even of this video because there's so many intricate details that go into this process. Um, and I stumbled so many times, even just saying them out loud. It's gonna feel like a stumble sometimes to even just move through it and to be like, oh wait, did I remember this detail or that detail or did I send this document in? And the bureaucracy of it can almost, in some ways, pull us away from why we're doing it. So you can do it. It's so worth it. You have people um, at the Seattle School that will come alongside you. You will build a community of colleagues who will be in it with you. You'll build a community of mentors who have gone through it that can kind of cheer you on and offer insights. And you are stepping into a professional field that's really important and needed in this season of our world. This is important work.